Hey everyone, happy Friday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So tonight we are going to quilt our, uh, um, our little, we have three embroideries that we have on deck here. Uh, so we have the F, G, and H, and I'm hoping we can quilt through all of them. Uh, we're using just my at-home machine, my uh, just with a, like a darning foot on there, so we can do some free motion quilting. I haven't done that in a little bit, so that'll be fun to give a go at again. So thanks again for joining. Uh, all right, let's get going. All right, hello, hello, everyone. So here are our three embroideries. So we have the the H, and I think we're gonna do this one first just because this is the only one that I have on my brain right now. Uh, we have the G and uh, the F. And then we've already done, uh, so the F is the Fox. We've already done the, uh, the rest of them. So this is kind of what we're doing tonight. We're gonna be free motion uh, quilting. I have the thread and everything in. Uh, we are just going to basically be adding uh, the decorative stitches all the way around. We have our three layers of fabric already. We have the front, the back, and the batting in there. So we're all set up. And uh, I have a little practice sheet as well in case we want to try out some stitches. And I also have <laughs> my little clipboard that we've been drawing with the, the dry erase marker just to kind of practice like just to kind of like map out what we even want to do for for these little uh, little stitching. So I think that's where we're gonna start tonight. And like I said, I think I want to start with the hedgehog as well. So thanks for everyone for popping in. So all right, I have a little bit of an idea. Um, so uh, let's give that a go. All right, hopefully it's looking all right for you guys there. Happy Friday, time to crochet with your yarn assistant and online watcher friends. Oh, fun, Caitlin. Uh, all right, so I'm, uh, just so you know, I'm, I'm kind of like looking, if you're on TikTok, I'm looking all over the place. I'm on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok right now. All right, with this hedgehog, we kind of have like this little circle and uh, um, the text at the bottom there. So I'm just gonna kind of draw it on here, just smaller. I have a little bit of an idea here, that'll be his little nose. A uh, little bit of an idea of what I want to do on this one. So I, I liked, uh, I liked last night we worked on that chain stitch. So the the letter H's are filled with the chain stitch, and I thought it kind of looked like knitting. So I thought maybe we could go around, you know, just frame our piece here a little bit. Let's say that this is our um, our piece, and then the then uh, we could do like just like knitting lines almost. So where we kind of swirl up and down like this, just something kind of sort of easy, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. And then, uh, then the next round, ooh, how would that work? The next round would have to, oh, it'd be just kind of like exactly the same, wouldn't it? It would just kind of come up. So it, yeah, like this. So it almost looks like knitting going through there a little bit. Um, and then we wouldn't, it'd be a trick going around our shapes there. But I think we are just like completely exactly repeating. Ooh, I'm going to get messed up doing this. Wait a sec. Did I already mess it up? I think I did. <laughs> See, this is why I, I have to practice first. Let's, uh, I'm going to erase that little bit. And let's just try and see if I can get that going right. So this is just so I can get like my mind right uh, for doing this in actual like stitches. So I'm doing the same shape. Oh, I, I see what I did wrong. This goes all the way down like this. There we go. <laughs> I didn't get it right on top there, but let's, let's do the next thing. I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting the pattern though. But you guys kind of know what I'm saying here. I, I kind of like, I kind of like this kind of knit look. Down and up and down and up. Okay, then here. I wonder if it's smart to do, well, I don't know, maybe starting from the bottom. I gotta practice this one more time though, cause I still don't have it. 
up. Down is the same, up is the same, down. And then here we'd have to like travel, get some bloops in, uh, which is gonna be a little bit difficult. All right, yeah, this is gonna be tricky with with um, this in the middle. Uh, I wonder if we should even draw this out. Like, so the top row should be easy, theoretically. All right, but see how we kind of have like a, a knitting sort of look to it? Uh, I think that would be fun. So the trick is just gonna be like the getting in and out of these spots a little bit. But as long as I have like a baseline going, then uh, then we should be able to do it. So I'm gonna start by tracing around the outside. All right, I, I think I think we got it. Let's give it a go. Let's just give it a test. And if it ends up being crazy, who cares? It's, it'll still be held together with stitches. We'll, we'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into it too. And I think I'm just gonna start, oh wait, no, no, I'm gonna trace it, trace it first. So yeah, I'm just gonna go around this once. And then I'm gonna clip it off and then I'll just start here and we'll start like our little loop de deals. I wonder if I should kind of mark them off. Now nah, we're gonna free free ball this thing. So all right, let's get over to the machine. <laughs> See how it goes here. I'm gonna undo this. Um, actually, I might undo all of these right away because they're all gonna be in our way real quick here. So I hope everyone had a lovely day. Um, I think this will be kind of fun. I feel like we haven't done this for a while. What about starting at the top? We could do that too. I think it's gonna be the same. I'm gonna have like the same mental blocks as starting from the bottom. I think I'm actually gonna start from the bottom because I think I'll be able to see what I'm doing a little bit more. Because if I start at the top, then it's all gonna be like above the sewing machine. I'm not sure, I don't, I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but here, I'm gonna start, like I'm gonna use my quarter inch foot as a guide to um, be a quarter inch away from the edges here of, of the design. So we'll just stay, we'll use that as a quarter inch. So I'm bringing up the bobbin thread. There we are. Keep that nearby. All right, now let's put down our presser foot. Do a couple little stitches in place here. All right, and I think we're ready. And you know what? I think I'm gonna get my gloves on as well. That always helps a little bit. Um, so let's do that. Oh, starting at the top will give better muscle memory? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, did I survive the storms? Yes, we did. Um, maybe the center on each side to keep every everything even. Um, the problem with starting on the cent, like on just doing the sides first is that I, I need like one going all the way so I can know like what stitch goes where, if that makes sense. Um, all right, let's give this a try. I feel like we haven't done this in ages. Oh yeah, I gotta breathe, that's always a problem. Out here holding my breath. Okay, one thing I am trying to remember besides breathing is to uh, lots of stitches and move move slowly. So a faster needle than if I was just like normally sewing and then uh, can't do can't talk and and <laughs> stitch at the same time. but there we are. All right, <laughs> uh, Robin's asking why do I wear the gloves? Um, it helps grip the fabric a little bit more than just my hands, and I, these are the ones I happen to have. My mom has some like, like just fabric gloves, and those seem to work really well too. Uh, less puckers if I start in the center, that's true.
how am I going to do that though? So, I mean, I, I have the, so we do have this stitched in the center. So that's, that's good. I mean, we also have going for us that we're just using this tiny, we're just stitching this tiny little thing. We're not like doing a whole quilt, like from the edge. So in that case, I theoretically want to, um, oh, I need a scissors. Theoretically want to start in the center for sure. All right, I'm going to just snip these little threads away and we'll see where we're at. I'm like all nervous for this. It's always like a little warm up here. Yeah, because I have to do like full rows. I mean, I could start at the top, either or. Fine, let's start at the top. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. We're gonna do a pile of little squiggles and then whenever I hit this line, I'm gonna have to like pretend that the squiggle is going through and then like come up and like connect. So I will be retracing this line a few times theoretically. So this might be messy, but we're gonna, we're gonna just see. All right, so I'm gonna start over here. I mean, we may have a little puckers. And the nice thing too, is that I will be cutting off quite a bit of this. So um, I only need like eight and a half inches worth of stitching. So I can start a little bit in, so that'll make it a, a bit easier. Okay, let's bring up the bobbin thread to the top again. There we are. Okay, I always had to put my, remember to put my needle down again. Okay, so we're just making like big rounded loop-de-loops. <laughs> Marie says you can do it. I hope so. <laughs> okay, let's give it a go. Oh, thanks, sweetie. I appreciate it. Is this a new sewing machine? Oh, hell no. This is, uh, this is from, uh, 19, this is my 1970s Kenmore. This was my mom's, uh, sewing machine in college. This is a, it's a Sears Kenmore sewing machine. So this is the one that is kind of broken a little bit. Uh, I can't get the feed dogs, which are the little like grippy feet. Um, I can't get those to stay up. And it was the case that I couldn't actually get them to go down. So I brought it in and they were able to loosen it all up and, and uh, get the feed dogs so they could go down, uh, which is great for free motion quilting like this. Uh, then it doesn't like advance the, the thread or the, the fabric. Uh, that's what the feed dogs do. But now I can't get them to stay up. So if I, if I put them up and I put any pressure on it, they just kind of duck down again. So I can't actually do anything but free motion quilting on this, this machine. So we break it out for that, which is a bummer. This is like my primary machine um, and I haven't been able to use it in ages except for free motion quilting. All right, we're gonna go for it. I think, yeah, squiggle down. Oops, I already got my fingers in the way. We're gonna make them kind of small, I think. Uh, you know what I should have done? So this is gonna be extra free motion, but I should have uh, drawn like horizontal lines on this, I think, because then I could have kept um, the tops and bottoms of these going at the same height. So this is gonna be a little wonky and I haven't done a design like this before, but we're gonna give it a go still. All right, good enough. <laughs> It's, it is what it is. We got, we got our first little row there. I think it's fine. Um, all right. So theoretically, I didn't think about this when, when we were practicing, but theoretically I should start on this side. Yeah, I should start on this side. I kind of want to draw that line in. Let's, let's see. I think I have an, an air erasable. Pen. Yeah, these I, I actually don't like these air erasable ones because they don't stay nearly long enough. But uh, let's just see if it will here. So I'm gonna. Oh gosh, I can't see it at all. But just just enough. Actually, just me scoring, putting a little score line down here. 
where where I can see the f the edge in my fabric. <laughs> We're doing this without a ruler too. Let's uh let's just try and make them all a similar height. And this is still going to be super wonky, but whatever. We're experimenting. I think it's fun. All right, and then we'll have one down here. Meaning we'll have like our bottom row, it will be all nice. Okay, that was sketchy, but it gives <laughs> it gives me a little, I mean, do you, do you kind of get what I'm doing here? Because all of these rows theoretically should be all in line, kind of like how our chain stitches were all, we try to get them all lined up and that's how knitting would be. Um, so I think this will be fine. So I think maybe we will go in reverse here. So I will, I'll stitch down to here and I'm just going to, I'm just supposed to kind of mimic what's going on up here. Theoretically, I could have gotten these in and out a little bit more. And this one we'd come up. Kind of get down here again. And then we'd be down to the line again. Okay. <laughs> I think I got it. Let's try. Give it a try. Oh, you, you usually watch on Facebook and it's, it's different than this angle. So a lot of times I'll try and do the same, the same angle. Um, but when I have this whole setup going, this whole um, quilting setup, it gets a little different. Okay. I can already tell that my fabric is kind of bunchy. So I don't know, we'll do our best. <laughs> nervous laugh but again luckily this this part is going to be trimmed off theoretically oh my god i have i'm literally like sticking my tongue out like a cartoon i, I feel like i say that every time we do this but that's how it is all right so now i'm coming down to here and now i have to travel up the side of this hedgehog again theoretically as close to the same stitches okay and then I'm gonna come up again we're gonna get that and then again I gotta like pretend that we're going through this hedgehog so going around and then down to our line Kind of, kind of missed it there. <laughs> okay. I think we got it. All right. I think we're getting it. I mean, it, it is, it's a little, um, it's a little wonky. Oh gosh, look, I do have puckers all over it. I, I'm not too worried about that because once this gets washed, all that will, will kind of go away. But, uh, I didn't overlap these little bits as well, but this is kind of the look, I think. It's, it's implying knitting barely but um the same way that our our uh, uh chain stitches are implying knitting so let's let's just keep going oh and then what do i do here i'm gonna have to travel all the way around at the top and go to the other side i think or i just do this side i'll probably have to do, just do this side and then go okay yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to map this part out i know we're upside down here but like I should probably just do here and then like come back here and then like do here all the way and then probably here then here oh that that'll be tricky well no I, I just sort of have to meet up here Ugh. we'll figure it out and then the whole bottom line there i don't know we're gonna just go for it oh gretchen says i think it looks whimsical oh that's nice I agree to that too. Oh, that. Oh, I'm I'm missing I'm missing that. I I draw your line draw the lines on with an actual block. Oh, with an iron off pen. Oh, so that's a good idea. So and, and that's just making me remember that I think my mom said to, I should cut a piece of board like a cardboard with a hole in it so I can just so I can crop these in too, and that would help. We could do that with um stitching too 
yep, we can play around with all that stuff. All right, so I'm going to travel down here. Again, all this is going to get cut off, so I'm not too concerned how this is looking. All right, let's, let's do it. I don't think I've actually um, quilted where I drew it on first, so that'd be kind of fun. All right, see, so that, that one sort of ends there. Hmm. I think it might actually be easier to crawl over the top here and then just get this side. And then the same thing here, go to here and then like trace around. I, I think we're gonna do that. So we're gonna just be tracing around this hedgehog a bunch of times. Which is fine. All right, now this guy should get a little bloop. Because we're mimicking. Mimicking that stitch, and all right, I think we're good here. Oh, but let's get rid of, get rid of our pin. Oop, with the needle down. Ah. There we go. Okay. This one might have been a good one to practice on the other, other uh, practice fabric, but we're getting it. This is kind of like more of the shape I wanted it, just like these kind of big bloopy shapes. And I keep missing. <laughs> All right, it is what it is. Let's go to the next line. So now here is where I would travel underneath. So here we would have an under and then kind of an over. So we would have like a little bloop here. Okay. Traveling around the edge. Which is a little bit crazy, but I still think this is kind of fun. Okay, so now I'd bloop up a little bit here. Yeah, a little bit higher. So like, like this is coming up this way. Yeah. Then we travel up some more. down. Okay. <laughs> we got it. That was the scary row. So let's, let's keep going. Does, oh yeah, the airy raceable mink that it disappears over time. Yeah, the air erasable one just kind of goes to nothing. I never, I, I had tried it for embroidery, but I never use it because it just goes away so fast. Like I can't see it anymore. I can see more of the, the line that I'm stitching. jog in there. All right, now here's a trick that I didn't think about. I'm gonna have to get this so it connects with this one over here. So I need to know like how many are here. 
going down where this is this one and like one more before I get to there. So this one is down and then comes up. Okay, and then I gotta travel a little bit. All right, so then this one comes down here. Okay, got it. Like so. And now I gotta travel again. I have to say it out loud so I so I get it all. Alright, then feel myself uh like someone who's played uh, um nintendo for the first time do you remember this like when they like move their like they're trying to jump and then like they're moving like their controller with it i feel like i'm moving my head up and down with with uh <laughs> with each stitch here i think we're getting the effect it's it's uh, rough but i think we're getting getting the effect here so let's do our last last row Oh, here. Let me let me zoom in for a little a little bit for you guys here. So bear with me a little sec. There. Let's try doing it from there. So I'll and I'll show you it after a little bit. Okay. Last little bit down here. I feel like all of these are like common, like this is a common design, I think, like these squiggles, but I have definitely not had practice with them. Just like the distance they go in and out totally needs work. But this is what I'm playing around with. This is, this is what I like. Kind of learning as I go on a project. That's going to be quite the pucker there, but all right. I think that's it for that guy. Let's take him off the machine. Okay, so here's here's what we got going on. So sort of has that like knitted look, uh, that knitted pattern. It's kind of, I don't know, brick-like, I guess, a little bit. But it's a it's a good all over all over pattern I think so I think that's looking decent enough. All right, and we gotta try something new, and that's what I like doing <laughs> with all of these designs. So and again, this will be trimmed down to like eight and a half inches. So we're gonna it's just it's gonna look like just texture in the background because we're gonna lose a whole lot of it because the focus is just gonna be kind of on on the hedgehog. So it might just be kind of more more like that. Uh, so. So we are going to lose a, a pile of that. But all right. One done, you guys. Let's do another. Okay. Uh, we got the fox here. Any ideas? <laughs> oh, Lydia says it reminds her of the of top of bowling ball pins. That's totally what it looks like for sure. Um, all right. Just pictured. Oh, a jackhammer working on the street. Um, all right. It just makes it more organic. Uh, reminds me of the quilts on the hedgehog. Oh, the quills on the hedgehog. Oh, that makes sense. All right. So we got the giraffe and the um, fox left here. So if either of you or either of you, <laughs> this phone and this phone are the either of you. Um, I don't know what we should do for that. I do like the I do like that we've been kind of tracing the outsides of them. I think that's kind of framing them nicely. I mean, I'm not against just doing some little swirls around and, and practicing that some more. Um, we could do like a really angular thing at some point. 
or a, like a little pictorial thing. Like we could just draw grass and uh, flowers in the grass. So like a bunch of zigzags with, with flowers. That might be a little difficult. And I also like, um, I kind of want to do what we did with the elephant, even though I know that we did it already, but I just think it turned out so pretty. Uh, here's here's the, the elephant where we had like these squiggles with uh, the little flowers around it. Uh, that's This is my favorite thing that we've done so far here. Um, and it was easier than I thought too. That would be really pretty around the fox maybe. Should we do like a circle of that and then um, then maybe just like another one around? What about straight up and down like grids? Oh, we could do that. Swirls on the fox. Ooh, swirls. Because they curl up in those adorable circles. Oh, that's true. Let's get our let's get our little practice sheet out again. Maybe that'll help. Alright, so I can erase I can erase this. This is just neat. Neat to practice on on this first. That's actually been super duper helpful for me. So, all right, so the fox is more like a kind of triangle shape all in all. So um, we'll have to work around around that. So like, here's here's the Fs and you know, just so this, this is a little bit more clear body and then the tail like so. Okay, boop, boop, meow. Yep. <laughs> now I just want to draw. All right. Uh, so here's our fox. Um, so let's see. We had swirl suggestions. We, how about like swirls, bigger swirls with like bigger flowers. So kind of like a big version of, of the, of the um, elephant. So maybe we trace it uh, really closely. Like on, on the elephant, we, we traced right on the edge. And we didn't even trace the Fs, which I don't think we should hear either because it's it's uh, um, French knots and they kind of stand on their own. So what if we trace the fox really close to the lines and then, yeah, so what if we just do bigger flowers and like bigger swirls, like maybe those double swirls like that and then another flower. And then like a double swirl. Okay, this feels manageable <laughs> for my brain. Not, it's not always manageable for me to do this, but uh, this is feeling decent for me. So, there, so something like, like so. I think that's decent. Or that clover shape. Oh, clover, that'd be fun. So just like four. I, I'd probably make them as bloops, just because that'll be easier for me. Yeah, so like four leaf clovers. Oh wait, clovers look like this. Clovers are like hearts, aren't they? We could do that. So uh, um, instead of the flowers, we would do, like I'd, I'd come up for a flower. So we just did a swirl. I'm coming up for a flower. And then I'd make like little hearts, four of them. So it'd be like a four leaf clover and then we can get out of there. I like that. That's good. Yeah, then it's like he's in a little like happy meadow. Okay, uh, uh, let's go for the clover. I think that's kind of fun. I wonder if we add like leaves every once in a while. Nah, the, the, um, the swirls kind of, we don't need all that. Uh, let, let's start here, and I'm going to attempt to do them larger, like kind of this size, I think. So so larger than what we did with the elephants. Because um, the elephant, we did them like super duper itty bitty, like dainty, which I, which I do like. But uh, let's just try something a hair different. All right, I think this is a good plan. I like it. All right, first I want to outline him real close. So I'm just going to go right on the edge. Um, so it's almost invisible. So let's get rid of all these fellers. I'm going to stab myself again with these, aren't I? Okay, I like it. 
this feels like a thing I can do too. <laughs> I've only ever done it that once before on the on the um on the elephant, but that was fun. All right, I'm gonna bring up the needle here. Or the, um, bring up the bobbin thread, I should say. Come on, guy. Ugh, come on. I guess I got it there. I just gotta dig in there. There, okay. So this isn't gonna be perfect, but I'm, I wanna, um, Go as closest to the edge as I can, hopefully without going over the line. So we'll see. Okay, let's do it. Oh gosh. The one problem with this, this, like I like this foot. I should try getting another foot. I do like this foot because it's a quarter of an inch. So I can, so I know that like if I want to stitch a quarter of an inch away from a line, it's going to be a quarter inch no matter what angle I go at. But it's not very see-through. Uh, I guess it's a little clear on the inside. Oh, maybe I'll look at that. It, it's metal on the outside, but there is a little clear bit on the inside. It's just like, oh, I can't see if I'm stitching close. But if I look right down into there, then I can. Okay, good. Never mind. Figured it out. <laughs> I was just thinking, ugh, this is not see-through. This is going to be difficult, but it is sort of see-through right in the middle. It's just a different spot than I'm normally looking at, so it's awkward. Oh, this feels so weird. Like... Looking through that hole almost feels like an optical illusion, though, so I'm not sure I'm stitching it. I mean, you know, we're fine. Whew, okay, well, before I get too far there, I am going to snip these threads, because they're going to get in my way real soon here. Okay, we're close enough to this edge uh, that we're going to get the effect that I think we want. Oh, Eddie, I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Uh, Eddie shared. Shared the vid. So next week, you guys, we will be stitching our embroidery of the month, which are those cute little chickens. So more embroidery. Oh, and I have all this quilting stuff out. So I was hoping to pop in tomorrow sometime, maybe for a couple hours, and working on the... Uh, um, the granny square quilt that we have going. Uh, I'm at the point where I'm trying to stitch free motion quilt, like the decorative borders. Real little bloopy bloops on there. And I think uh, because I have all this stuff out, it would be awesome to get a, a little further on that project. Presser foot had a little hard time going over that satin stitch. Ooh, the satin stitch too, it doesn't want to go over it. Whew, all right, made it. I can breathe. I don't think I've been breathing. All right. Oh, Gretchen says I need to quilt mine to your uh, your granny square quilt. Yeah, it's been just sitting up here, and I'm like, I cannot, I gotta get that thing done, and I don't want it to sit up here anymore. I do have to do some straight line stitching on it yet that I've been doing at my mom's house, since she has a sewing machine that can that has feed dogs that work um, that I can use her walking foot with. So I've been doing that there. Uh, so I think I have like three more straight lines, but I I can do the that tiny little border. It's like a little bloop -de bloop. I don't even know. I'm sure it's called something, I'm sure, in quilt land. Um, but all right, we got the 
uh, fox traced, and I think that turned out just uh, just nice. You can see it on the back too, which is fun. Um, and it looks like legit like the fox shape on the back too, so that turned out pretty cute. Okay, now we are going to attempt to do this clover deal. Um, and you know what? I think I'm going to get rid of all these other pins. We kind of overpin this one. Uh, but I think I'm going to like use this whole space. So one thing I do have to remember is that I, I am kind of working in this eight and a half inch square, ultimately an eight inch square. So a lot of this is going to get trimmed off. So I don't want to like be doing the pattern way out on the edge. I want to kind of keep it inside here. And, but if I chop a little bit off, I think that's fine. Then it'll be like an edge to edge kind of pattern. Um, I just have to like remember to not have them way far out, still tuck them up next to, next to him. Actually, we'll probably just get this guy done tonight. Um, but maybe we'll start off tomorrow. I know I didn't go around the Fs, but maybe we'll, maybe we'll start off tomorrow with, um, doing the letter G. That'd be kind of nice. Just finishing up the letter G and then getting onto the granny square. I don't know. Maybe we'll just start the granny square. Let that one be for later. We'll have other things to quilt. All right. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I didn't go around the Fs. I just thought I'd like leave that. I didn't do that on the elephant either. It looks like so the elephant. I didn't go around the E's. So I'm like, yeah, that looks fine. Um, it would be a little difficult to go around these Fs anyway because of the French knots are so like fat. Um, that I think my presser foot wouldn't like that. And I just kind of like the blue edge. I didn't want to really add an orange edge with my, which, with my fabric there. So I'm going to just leave that. I do think it's nice tracing the, the dude though. All right, I'm going to look at my piece over here. So, okay, I think I'm going to start, we're going to start with one of these clovers. So I'm going to just start right here. And then I'm doing that double loop-de-loop, -loop, which I think is kind of fun. So start here, if I can get another one to be like here. Maybe I'll mark that. I feel like marking it is, is like freaking me out a little bit. Like, let's say this is the center for one. If we can get another one up here. Let's say we get a third one here. Maybe. I don't know, one probably has to be up here. And then maybe right here. And then the rest of these would be like, the rest of the spaces would be like where loop-de-loops are. Okay, that'll give me something to aim for at least. Let's give that a try. Whew, making me nervous. I get so nervous doing this. I don't know, maybe I just feel like I, don't know what I'm doing with this yet, but I feel like, like I hadn't ever done this when we did like the first splendid sampler, um, quilt. I hadn't even done any free motion quilting at all. We, that quilt that we did after the, um, charming chevrons quilt, that was like my first free motion quilting. So I, I definitely feel like I'm a beginner still, but maybe after tomorrow, I mean, I'll still feel like a beginner, but, um, but I think we'll ease into it. Like I'll start getting into a groove, I think tomorrow when we're doing the same design for a bit of time. Come on, I'm trying to get, bring up this bobbin thread. There we go. This could be in a butt. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do those four little hearts. Um, so they look like clovers. Okay, and I think when I get to the center of this one, like right there, I'm going to get rid of these threads because that's going to be in my way. Okay, we're doing it. I should have started down here because then I can get out of it easier, but whatever. As long as we all meet in the center here, we'll be fine. Now 
we gotta do that loop out of here. A double loop. Which I think are kind of pretty. Alright, so I'm, I'm kind of close to that second place that I said a, a second clover will go, so I'm feeling okay about this. Let's do more hearts. There's lots of other ways to do these hearts. I'm doing them super like wonky. Like you can add a little twist in them or like go from one to the other in a, like a figure eight. But I know for me, that's just gonna confuse my brain right now. Okay, now I gotta swirl my way out of here again. <laughs> that's always a little scary uh, getting in and out of these places, but we're gonna do it. Okay. And I want to do one of those double swirls again. So I think they're fun. Now we're going to come back down here into spot number three. This is cute. Okay, this is looking cute. I do like this. All right, let's 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 keep going. I'm halfway done. <laughs> so my four hearts again. Let's try doing one up the other way. There we go. Oh gosh, that might have been a bad idea. Now I'm gonna confuse myself. We're gonna follow this as if it's part of the heart. There, okay. Now we gotta end up here for our next one. All right, made it. All right, let's do it. So just to show you guys where I'm at, I know it's uh, hard to see that way, but here, here we go. Got our little clovers there and our little like double squiggle. I think it's looking cute. So we're just gonna continue around. And then, I mean, I don't think we have to do much more for the edge. I might just go around with a bunch of these double squiggles to fill in the gaps, but most of that's gonna get cut off. So I'm not too worried about it, but I think just, or maybe we'll do like some single swirls around it. I don't know, something uh, just to have a little bit extra there. I am doing that like figure eight version of the heart now. Getting bold here. <laughs> okay, now I'm working uh, my way to here, which will be my last clover. Well, my swirl will go to there. Okay, let's do it. Okay, these are super fun. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with this one. I do actually really like when we start all like, like where we're actually drawing shapes and stuff. I think that's fun, like drawing like clovers, like uh, real life things. Oh, hey Capri, very nice. I'm into arts and crafts myself. Oh, you only crochet sewing. Oh, crochet sewing, drawings, paintings, all of it. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right, so I need one last squiggle here. I could either come out here, but I think I'm gonna come out up here. I think that'll be kind of fun. Okay, we're gonna do our double swirl.
and get back to this center one. So that, that wasn't all that graceful at the end there. I should have paid attention to where this was and probably came out a little bit more before going here, but not too shabby. We went all the way around like it's a little wreath. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to jump out of this line. So I'll, I'll, I'll start fresh, I think. And I think I'm going to just leap. I'm going to just jump. Ooh, there we go. So I'm going to just like start here and add some smaller swirls all the way around it, I think. Just to kind of fill in this area. So, okay. Yep. So this is kind of our main deal. And then we'll, we'll just, we'll be adding like these swirls. Okay. So most of this will get like all of this right now is going to be cut off in the final thing, but that's, that's what we're trying to do, is just, like, fill in our gaps. So, like, here I probably don't need anything. We'll, we'll just travel over here, and I'll add a little swirl right there. Again, we'll probably get cut off, but let's add another one. I'm really kind of worried about the corners. And then down here, there's a lot of space. Up here, there's not as much. Ooh, it's definitely hard when you get this close to an edge. I'm sure there's tricks for that. like in full concentration mode. Okay, so I have to work my way back to this beginning point, and l let me cut the threads. So let's see, this one will kind of come down this way. Okay. We'll figure it out. back at the beginning so that will work just fine just like that I'm calling this guy done let's unsnip it oh that's right I didn't cut that point either okay so there we go I think that turned out awfully sweet all those little clovers in there uh it's a little much it got to be like a little bit much with the, the swirls but um there we go but the swirls are going to be basically trimmed off because like i said this is going to be about eight inches and i gotta make that little thing to stick on top so we can kind of see what that eight inches is going to look like but like my main goal was like you know here down in the corner now we'll have a little bit of a fill there even though we'll we'll cut most of it off but yeah, so nice. I'm happy with that. That was fun. 
All right, and I think we'll probably stop it there for the evening. So we got these two guys. Oh, not him. Where did Hedgy go? So <laughs> that little knit thing that looks kind of crazy, but it's fun. And then our uh, little fox. I kind of think we should do these swirly flowers for, for all of them. So here for TikTok, here's the, the fox and uh, the, the hedgehog there. <laughs> kind of looks like knit. I do like that. All right, you guys, and then uh, we will just save this letter G for another time, uh, next time that we're stitching these guys. So H, okay, I and J. So inchworm and jellyfish are next months. So we can uh, do, uh, um, do this when we do those ones as well. So awesome. All right, I think we're gonna call it there then for this evening. So there we are, here it is from further away. I think they just turned out sweet. And this is gonna look cute all together. Uh, we'll start assembling this soon too, I'm hoping. Um, maybe next month uh, when we get a little bit further. Um, well, we'll have a plenty of these done, uh, but yeah, maybe if we can catch up with the quilting of, of the next few, we can um, start assembling these. And, and if I don't, if I'm not down in the basement because it's thunderstorming and tornadoing outside, <laughs> we would have had an extra day. Uh, so we could have done that if we had an extra day this week. But anywho, so I'm going to uh, put all this stuff away uh, and then tomorrow... Uh, I'll probably pop on in the morning sometime for a little bit, and we will work on the uh, granny square quilt a little bit here. Uh, since I have my whole setup going, um, it'd be nice to do something else while it's all set up. So we'll we'll get a little bit further on the quilting of that, which would be fabulous. It'll be awesome to be further along on that project as well. Getting them all done, getting all the projects done. So all right. Uh, have a lovely, lovely evening, everyone, and a lovely weekend, and uh, I will, uh, if you pop in tomorrow, um, I'll probably announce it on Facebook right before I go live, um, otherwise, probably around 11, 11.30ish, and, uh, yeah, we'll quilt for a little while, and other than that, I'll be back here on Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, so have a lovely weekend. Good night. Oh, yeah, so, uh, Robin, yep, this is my big embroidered hedgehog. I can turn it a little for you guys. There we go. It is... Hold on. It is stitched with yarn.